I came up with this idea at home and I had a problem and I was in dire need <laughs> of a solution at the moment. So I just started mixing stuff at home and uh, came up with something that worked and I just went from there. So our next guest is Renee Tukne. She's a Anishinaabe woman and she lives right here in Thunder Bay. She's an entrepreneur who's currently developing a cosmetic product for all of us to use. So please welcome Renee. All right, so you're developing a cosmetic product. Yes. Super exciting, tell us about it. It's an all green natural product um, that we're developing and I can't really say too much. I'm trying to protect my intellectual property because I'm not through the whole process yet. Um, but it's very exciting. So where are you right now in developing this product? What phase are you in? Right now, the phase that I'm in is in testing and research. I'm actually formulating the recipe right now for it. What led you to this? What led you to this entrepreneurial path? There was a lot of things that led me to this entrepreneurial path, but one of the main things that helped me was uh, embracing my heritage. So what did embracing your cultural heritage do for you? Every human needs four things, mm -hmm. um, and their identity, um, belonging, uh, confidence, and purpose. And that if a human has those four things, then they can be successful. And I think I see that embracing my culture and learning about it, my roots, it really helped me to have that sense of identity. Then it helped me to have that sense of belonging to the community in Thunder Bay and, and seeing other Anishinaabe people um, participating. And it also helped me you know, to gain that confidence. And then it's just enabled me to find my purpose and move forward with that strength as a, a proud uh, Anishinaabe woman. So were there any challenges or obstacles while in this entrepreneurial path? Uh, there's lots of obstacles and, and there's always going to be obstacles. That's a part of having uh, that entrepreneurial thinking of finding the solution, I think. Um, but for me, yes, research definitely is still ongoing. It was very instrumental at the beginning. And um, yeah, the obstacles are there. And, and how my brain works is that if I see a problem, I just try to think, okay, well, what's the solution to the problem? How do you use science, technology, engineering, and math in your job? Well, for me, I'm formulating a cosmetic product, so um, what I've noticed is, uh, you know, there's a lot of math, there's a lot of science. Um, at one point, I was wishing I could pull out my science book because, <laughs> you know, I'm experimenting. So I remember the steps in experimenting, you know, you have to form a hypothesis. Yeah, there's a lot of measuring apparatuses, uh, a lot of milliliters and switching and math. And um, the other part that I found for my product is when I was doing market research, I had to learn statistics and graphs. So yeah, a lot of those skills from school were, uh, were coming in handy. What was high school like for you? <laughs> well, for me, maybe, I don't know, some youths can relate, but for me it was, uh, well, hopefully not too many, um, for me it was like a big, um, I wasn't very focused, it was like a big drug fest, you know, I came to school to socialize um, and then uh, later I got clean and uh, it was different after that, you know, I was a year behind everyone and so my friends had all gone on, so it was, I was really focused, you know, I went to school, I worked and it was kind of lonely at the same time because I wasn't in that scene anymore. Um, then being Aboriginal as well, I felt like I didn't always fit into the mainstream of, of school, mm -hmm. you know, so, because I'd moved to a different high school at that point. So yeah, it was kind of difficult. When you started out, what did you think entrepreneurial skills were? That's kind of the impression I had, but now I think um, being an entrepreneur and having skills is like having the courage first of all, to take the risk and to move into being an entrepreneur. But I think it's also dedication and commitment and perseverance, because it's not easy. So how did you see your product fitting into the world? I see my product, um, well, it's a green product, so I see it like 
on the shelf. I can already visualize it being on the shelf in shoppers. I visualize it being online, someone punching in the problem that they have and boom, up comes my website and mm -hmm. they can order my product online. Um, yeah, I see it. It's, it's a, a product that can go global. What's your business model? My business model is for profit. Um, the other thing though that's really important to me as a, um, for my company is it has to be green and being Aboriginal and just learning about the culture and learning about um, the principles and the teachings and the traditions that we have. Uh, protecting Mother Earth and our next seven generations is mm -hmm. the, the mindset. And it's very important to me not to add anything into my products or not to take from Mother Earth or to destroy Mother Earth for profit. That right. I, I just, that's the integrity that I have. I would never want to do that.